Now, welcome back. High school football two-a-days are about a week away to help you get prepared. Our very own Tom Cole sat down with the Director of Communication at the OHSAA to find out the changes being made to help keep your kids safe and how to handle a concussion. Tom. Hi, Tom Cole for BCSN and Buckeye Broadband. And what an honor and a privilege it is to welcome in Tim Street. Tim is the uh, Information Director for Ohio High School Athletic Association. And uh, welcome, Tim. It's an honor to have you in the studio. Thanks, Tom. It's my pleasure to be here. August 1st, doubles. I want to give some of the parents that don't know, um, you know, they worry about their kids, and I, and I get that 100%. Um, you know, how many days do they go before they put all the pads on? They worry about temperatures. This is, you know, a really obviously hot summer this year. The water deal, you know, I, I think you get you get water whenever you need it. But mm -hmm. but talk a little bit about the protocol for the start of doubles. Sure. Well, the thing, and I get asked this question a lot. The first thing I always say is that football in Ohio and across the country, really, is safer now yes. than it's ever been. Now, there's a lot more attention on it now, and we can talk about concussions too. But from hydration and preparedness and the concussions, uh, we we think football's in a good place. Yes. Can it get safer? Can it get sure. better? Sure, it can. But the thing that we try to emphasize, and our coaches do a great job with this, there's an acclimatization period that starts every start of practice, yeah. and it's Monday, August 1st this year. Kids are going to go through five days before they even start hitting. Uh, they're going to be in helmets for a couple days. They're going to be in shorts and shoulder pads for a couple days. Then they put the pads on for a full day before they even start hitting. So there's a chance to get acclimated to the pads, to uh, obviously we're dealing with heat, as you mentioned. And you're right that the good programs give water when the kids need it. Um, we also scaled back how much hitting's allowed in two days I this wanted, year too. I'm so glad you're talking about it. Explain mm -hmm. that to parents because, you know, in the old, I, I come from the old days of football. You're, you're a young, young guy, but I was in the days where you didn't get water and they gave you salt tablets, uh -huh. if you can imagine. Uh -huh. And they hit three, you know, three times a day and, you know, all the, Football has changed so much, as you said, for the protection of, of the youngsters. I mean, I think that's that's such a great thing. So lessening the hitting is is you know, less obviously chance to get to get hurt. Right. Well, and, and the thing that we were surprised at when we enacted these guidelines from the National Federation last year, we heard from a lot of coaches that they were starting to do this already. But you're right. In, in the old days, you had doubles. You had a morning practice and an afternoon or a morning and an evening. Yeah. And kids were going full out hitting both practices. All sessions, yeah. And what, what the research shows is that a cumulative effect of helmet to helmet contact, that's where you run the risk of right. getting more concussions. And the thing with concussions, too, it's a brain injury. You can overcome that. It, it's a not a whole lot different than some other injuries. The problem with concussions is when you get another one right away. Too quickly after Too the quickly, first absolutely. Right. That's where it can be lethal. Uh, right. And that is what these new rules have uh, been put in place to try to do, is to keep kids from getting, a, a, even if it's a minor concussion, that you're not going to be hitting again within a couple hours, because that gives your body time to show symptoms. And there's all kinds of symptoms of a concussion. So our coaches are aware of that. We'd really try to emphasize that coaches and schools have a certified athletic trainer. They're at their practices, not just games, but practices too. Tim, I'm so glad you're talking about this, and, and, and mostly uh, coaches are really well schooled in it. But the parents, when the youngster comes home, they've been concussed. You know, I, I've heard all kinds of different things. You know, the rapid eye movement thing. They should be in a dark room. They shouldn't watch TV. They shouldn't watch movies. What What is the your youngster comes home? They've got a concussion. Uh, what as a parent? What do you do at home? Well, I think uh, there's probably two avenues to go down. Number one is if, you're, if your child may have a concussion. And I think one of the good things for parents to go, and there's a free 20-minute concussion uh, presentation on okay. our website that parents, uh, I've watched it, parents can watch it to know what Give are- the website, Tim. It's www.ohsaa.org, and we have a sports medicine tab. Okay. And there's a concussion uh, resources link right there. You can watch that video, it's from the National Federation, and it gives you what to look for, because a lot of times it's not apparent right away. We're used to saying, okay, if a kid has a concussion, he's right. out cold on the field. Right. That's not often the way it is. It, right. It's that they have a headache, it's that they have bright lights that they're seeing. That's, yeah. uh, so there's all kinds of minor things. So if your son or daughter, um, because girls soccer has a lot of concussions too, yes. if your son or daughter has some of those symptoms, it's good that if a parent can recognize that and say, hey, we better get you checked out. That's the first avenue. The second avenue is if they've been diagnosed with a concussion. And that's when a parent, a neighbor, a coach, anyone, if they're under the concussion protocol, listen to your doctor. Your doctor's the only one then that can clear that student athlete back to play.